The galaxy has been dubbed a caterpillar killer, an Apollo killer, and even by some psychopaths as a replacement for the Perseus. But we can see what it actually is, now we have solid information. Let's take a look. It is 16.01 in the UK. I understand that the RSI stuff has just gone live. I have not yet looked at the galaxy and once again I am off script with you guys. So we can react to this as pure and as open as we can together. Um, so I don't have a chance to kind of really go through any opinions and fully form them. Because this is how things go really, really right for YouTubers, honestly. Um, we're going to have a look, see what we think, what conclusions we come to. Um, and then um, basically give my thoughts on on where the ship is so let's have a look i understand it has gone live i've set it up on the rsi page i haven't yet clicked on the galaxy so let's head across okie doke so going down then galaxy is the first thing that's there which is great although i mean i set this up literally as it flipped over and the pitch is not loaded that doesn't look good to me uh let's have a look explore the galaxy So before we go anywhere at all on the ship, um, the pictures aren't loading. See, this is why I don't do stuff live. It just, it doesn't, like, that's not how my, oh, okay, I'll shut up. <laughs> I was going to say, this is not normally how my life goes. Um, normally it just goes wrong and then I spend 15 minutes trying to fix it. Um, I guessed on the Info Runners channel when I was over there talking about the Galaxy that the ship was going to come in at about $425.00. We now, from what they said in the ISC video about this ship, they said that it was um, modular and that they were much closer now to getting modules than other times that they've discussed it. So, this may well be like the Endeavour where they sell the modules. They might just sell preset variants until the modularity function comes in um, and you just pay depending on how many modules you have. I don't know. So, my prediction is probably miles off. Um, but the image here is pretty much exactly what they leaked. This is one of the the very first image we got of it. That and a screen grab of it in grey box. So the leak at the moment seems to be accurate. Many vehicles stake a claim to versatility and lots of them can indeed handle multiple roles. But through the galaxy, RSI is redefining the depth of ability. Yeah, great. So basically, one ship able to do multiple things. And we're going to come on to how I think that works later. Um, obviously, around the leak and around the information that was released at ISC two days ago, there's been a lot of panic um, about, oh my god, does this invalidate my ship? Um, does this completely destroy the insert name of ship here? Let's have a look. So we've got a bunch of modules. The ones that they confirmed are, are here. Cargo, med bay and refinery. Great. Others other uh, manufacturing so they have named one so interesting there's going to be a manufacturing module great and they're talking about more specialized modules so not generalized specialized so i think for me that makes a, a hangar module unlikely because hangar is very generalized I and mean, what you put in there fighter do you put something that's going to do industry with you is it just like a little run around is it a scout um that would be generalized and specialized. Manufacturing, obviously, is clearly one purpose. Um, module features, let's have a look. Okay, so the images are always nice to go through. Um, and one of the things that we've seen in the images before is this tractor beam arrangement that, see, that seems like it's going to make it very quick for things in the hangar to do stuff. So this is it set up for the cargo module. We've also seen this tractor arrangement for the refining module. Um, and hopefully we'll get that image in just a second. So, cargo module, 512 um, SCU cargo module. It looks like that's going to be the module separately. That's how that's worded. Um, the Galaxy also comes with 32 SCU of its own cargo. Not clear whether it's in that yet. Um, the wording would seem to say not. Medbay. Um... Interesting, because looking at that med bay, I'm just trying to figure out whether or not you'd fit a vehicle on there. 
So maybe you can have a rover or something as an ambulance to be able to drag people into and bring them back in. And the refinery, yep. Um, you can't see the uh, tractor beams here, mainly because I don't think this opens up into space. I think that happens all externally. So although you've got the tractor arrangement in two modules, very different way they're placed and different functionality. But that looks cool. I mean, it, it's pretty clear what's happening here. You've got this is effectively where the saddle bags are emptied into, into one of your processors, ejects onto a trolley, and then into your storage area. That makes a lot of sense to me. Okay, so let's have a look. Tractor cranes move cargo. Brilliant. So they're roof attached, very much like the shipping cranes at a port, um, to move cargo in around your own ship. Industrial lift. Great. So this one's got a lift too. Massive hold. Staggering. Yeah, so it, it's clear the module itself is going to be 512. Um, and then it's got a. Ha um, access to the after deck as well so that's really interesting um that it has its own ramp means you're going to have quite fast access to load and unload so this is going to be quite a rapid little um ship for for sorting cargo onto the med bay we've got minor injuries so there's your tier three med beds three tier three med beds it seems treat more serious injuries there's your tier twos and one tier one. So this is able to do everything. Three tier threes, two tier twos, one tier one, which separates it out from things like the Apollo, where the Apollo has the ability to have those. It can only have two because it has the modules port and starboard. They can be switched out. This is your standard setup. Again, ramp, um, a life lift. I like the way they've called that. And again, hangar access as well. And your refinery. Okay, processor one, processor two, so two processors running at the same time. Okay, um, your mineral extractors straight down below, and then what have we got here? Command console. Okay, so that's your station to do stuff. It looks like this area might be storage for crates and whatever else. And then again, direct access to the hangar, um, which if you don't have a ship in there, I'm sure will double up as more cargo space. Nice. Um, You've probably seen this from ISC, but this is so far, hands down, my favorite looking bridge. Um, I can only hope the Perseus is very similar, because um, Gib Perseus. Uh, but this looks absolutely great. It looks very futuristic um, compared to a lot of the other bridges. I love it. The raised command platforms just give that sense of kind of um, importance and elevation to the bridge team. Uh, yep, MPUV cargo. I, I think what this is showing off for me, the bit that I took from this, is look at the height of the uh, MPUV versus the hangar door into the module space at the back. So, yes, the hangar itself looks quite tall, but that to me shows like you're not going to be able to necessarily move a lot of things through. So people were talking, well, maybe you could bring things up and then move them through it's like possibly but then again possibly not um, the mpuv isn't the tallest thing in the world um and here it's quite obvious that you know th not everything's gonna be able to go through that hangar so effectively what i'm getting at is if you're going to use this as or try and use this as some proxy carrier you're not going to be able to put things in through the back hangar here and then move them into the cargo bay and move them around that looks very very unlikely and then, as CIG always does, despite the fact this is an industry-focused ship, despite the fact it is not uh, a combat vessel, uh, straight away we've got pictures of it in combat, blowing stuff up, scraping along the sides of stuff. Brilliant. Um, <laughs> but, you know, yeah, I guess very cool pictures. Um, and there's your hard points. You've got um, three twin turrets, and I guess we'll see the size in a second. Uh, I, I love all the captain's cabin stuff. Um, I, I think that's great. I like the, the stuff on the, the reclaimer, on this, uh, on the hammerhead. I love those separate spaces. They just mark out how important the captain is and how effectively over a ship they are God. Right? They, the, we, uh, in the Navy, we often said that it was their train set, meaning it was their set of toys and it was absolutely theirs to decide who played with it and who didn't. Um, 
picture of the crew quarters we haven't seen yet i like that again um another pool table apparently i need to get better at pool because in the verse that's going to matter and i'm cramped so <laughs> uh, and a sneaky little picture of the connie there as well nice um yeah that's a nice little um a nice little crew thing and you know people say well hang on there's six of us on board there's only four seats around the table what assuming that two don't pop up you know one at either end this is regular on a ship you very rarely have the opportunity to put an entire crew down at once i'm thinking about the wardrooms on a type 23 frigate for example there isn't enough room for the entire wardroom to dine at once unless you actually lay out the wardroom in a completely different in a completely different manner to the way it is at sea um, and that's because you've got people on watch, you've got people eating at different times because obviously the people that go on watch need their meal, go up, replace those that are on watch to come down and then have the meal. So meals are typically done in two sittings. Um, and there's CIG, whether intentionally or unintentionally, they've got that bang on. And this is the picture I was talking about, the prospector coming up underneath. You have those two pipes. I don't want you to do the whole thingy but i mean that's a really good example right there's the two collection pipes here one either side um and there's the two collection nozzles so ship comes underneath takes the track to be takes the saddlebag out empties it put the track uh, saddlebag back in one would assume uh, and then refines the um, minerals that they have inside well that's the question as to whether or not it can fit a pisces huh yes is the answer to that um and great synergy with the ship that was just released um, i've got a video coming on that it's not just the pisces that's why it's taking a little bit longer i appreciate that everyone is going to be sick to death of the pisces in a very short while but this is um going to cover not just the pisces itself it's also going to cover medical gameplay in general so make sure if you're not already you subscribe and you hit the notification bell so you get that one too uh, there's your med pods again um, I, I love this kind of all what how they're suggesting the medical stuff's going to be removed uh, moved around and you've got a couple options there for patient transport as well you seem to have uh, both the wheelchair in the background by the cargo door you've got the guy moving the stretcher around so it looks like that's all going to come with it as well as part of the whole manual cargo loading <laughs> I love the fact that I put wheelchair and manual cargo loading in the same sentence please don't hate it um, and then there seems to be some sort of office in the background. Maybe that's the doctor's office. Maybe that's like a pharmaceutical supplies. We just don't know at this point. Yeah, the, the outline. Um, it is, the outline is very Perseus. And what I've just noticed there, if you look on the upper deck, um, right hand side, where the two blue stripes are right above my head, just above it. Oh, my finger's gone the wrong way. Just above it there. That looks like a docking collar. So you've got a docking collar just uh, between the two struts that are well in the distance behind the galaxy. That looks like it's docking collar. Uh, we'll have to see whether it's got one on both sides or whether it's just an omni um, docking strut. Yeah, cargo pod again doesn't seem to be much else in there uh, other than you've obviously going to have the options to do the individual crates or the longer shipping containers that I think hold 32 SEU of cargo. Yeah, hangar, not much more said to, to, to that other than at the back, I think the uh, that's engineering, in effect, the dude up top. Um, it might also have access, I would imagine, to open and close the hangar doors. What's interesting there to me is that the dude's not in a flight suit. So either this is up, up operations in Atmo, or maybe, and I'm just, again, I'm just speculating, um... But that might be an air shield. So they might be able to come and go with crew in there not having protection uh, on. That would be cool too. <laughs> that bridge though. Yeah. And that's the, the full collection of images. Okie dokie. So. Wow. Okay, so the turrets are dual size 5 turrets. Okay, so I guess that's size 4s on gimbals. Um, great and then we've got some missiles there two racks each of four size so eight size two missiles in total extra small hangar which is kind of what we guess a one size three shield uh, that was leaked people are upset about that but remember 
this is an industry ship. If you are concerned about the, how this reacts in combat, you're probably taking it into the wrong situation. And this is one of the ways that CIG can stop everything in effect becoming a frontline combat ship is controlling the shields of that that are available to it. Length 110, so it sits between the Perseus and the Carrack, so she's a chunky girl, um, big old unit, with 60 meters. As we can see again, a lot of that space isn't going to be utilized right in the wings, but that could suggest things like larger fuel tanks, if that's where the fuel sits. Um, and height of 22 meters and crew of six. Nice. Okay, so down to price. I don't normally do price, so this isn't a buyer's guide. I am not going to suggest to you value. I'm not going to tell you whether or not you can buy this ship. I'm going to give my thoughts on where this ship sits, and then that's up to you guys as to whether or not um, you know where this sits with your fleet. Four hundred twenty-five dollars, I guessed on Info Runners a couple weeks back. Um, let's see how wrong I was. Um, wow. So for the cargo, I was a whole one pound seventy off. Um, I don't know where this sits in dollars. I obviously do this in Great British pounds, but I don't think there's much of a difference between the two. A hospital and a refinery. So interestingly, they're doing it both ways. You can buy what in effect feels like a variant. You can also buy, um, by looking at the bottom, um, your whole set of um, ships, uh, modules to go with the one ship. Um, and that looks to be what, what the bottom right is, the Galaxy Complete IAE. That's obviously not the war bond. That's for people to buy the store credit. Not a bad place to sit um, especially as the individual ships grab one of them earn some money buy maybe the other modules in game because i'd see no reason for cig to lock the modules behind paywall only once the game goes fully live um those modules would certainly be available to own maybe behind a rep wall but certainly not a paywall okay so without the modules then um i actually came in over the top um although i'm not quite sure whether i was talking modules or not um we have um the galaxy itself i actually like the galaxy paint the one in the center and the one on the right more than i like the protector paint if i'm being honest i think that's i think they got that the wrong way around that protector paint is um the concierge level um but uh, yeah I might just grab one and, and so I've got it. <laughs> what about the whole debate? This invalidates my right. Stop. Don't panic. please don't take to the comments yet. Take to the comments of what you think after these comments. After after my thoughts. Um, because this happens a lot and then we have this conversation and it seems to calm a lot of people down. If CIG balance this game right, here's the order. You have a dedicated ship, right? In terms of efficiency and what it's going to be able to do. So, for example, a dedicated refinery ship. Most efficient. Able to do the most stuff, right? Sits right at the top. A modular ship will then come in under that. It won't be quite as efficient, but it will be better than the jack-of-all-trades ship. So something that's able to do multiple things at once. For example, the Starfarer Gemini is able to carry cargo, refuel, and process into refineries, just like this thing. Now, why do I say that? Well, the dedicated ship, the dedicated ship makes sense for it to sit at the top because it has no other benefits, right? It's just dedicated. It focuses on that and that alone. Now, the modular ship, it makes sense to come in under that. Why? Well, because... I've got other things, I've got other purposes that I can, other roles that I can set my ship to. All right, so if I don't like the fact that I'm not making as much as a dedicated large refiner, I can go do cargo, I can go do medical gameplay, okay? The, the drawback of that is I'm gonna have to wait an as yet unspecified time for that module to be lifted out, taken away, another one brought in its place, kit, put in, connected, tested, make sure it works, and then my ship off it goes, right? And that's going to be a timer, I would imagine, much like the refinery. I doubt we'll be doing that ourselves. That's going to require access to a friendly station, and not just that, a station that has the capacity to do it, 
um, and actually has the facilities to do it. So, you know, when you get there, you're not in... You are number 37 in the queue. You don't want that, clearly. And why is that? Because that needs to be more effective than the Jack of All Trades ship, because it doesn't have the penalty to change its roles. Yeah, the Gemini, while it's moving fuel and refining fuel to top itself back up or, you know, to, to fill up the last of the capacity in its tanks, it's also shifting cargo. It doesn't have any penalty to switch between refueling, cargo running and fuel running, for example, to different locations. It does them all at the same time. So why, do, why isn't it as, as effective as the modular ship? Because it can switch between roles without any time penalty. And that, if CIG get the balance right, should be how it works. Dedicated, modular, jack of all trades. Can do everything all at once. Right? So, does this invalidate my dedicated ship? No, because the likelihood is your dedicated ship of the same size is going to be able to do the same things better. Does this invalidate the Titan Avenger as a cargo ship? Well, it depends. I mean... Yeah, from an SEU standpoint, it absolutely does. But I'm sure to balance these things out, there are going to be very small cargoes where at most you're going to be able to buy three or four SEU, but the value per SEU is going to be sky high for an Avenger. So an Avenger in that situation is going to make bank, whereas that sky high for three or four SEU of cargo in a galaxy is probably going to be eaten up just in the running costs. So does it invalidate? No, I doubt. It very much does. Um, sure, it has advantages over the jack of all trades. It also has disadvantages over the jack of all trades. And, and that's that. Um, in terms of talking this about combat, for me, because of the strength of the size, um, the, the strength of the one size three shield, this clearly isn't what this is focused for. Um, people will say, well, they mentioned a weaponry module. Yes, but we see no evidence of it here. Future modules coming soon. I very much doubt that this is going to get something that turns it into a very effective uh, combat ship. I doubt it's even going to get a bombing module. You know, we've got enough combat ships. We've got enough bombers. We've just had the, the spirit bomber variant turn up as well. I don't think that's where this is going. However... The fact that they've gone back to selling very uh, to selling modules, sorry, is really really cool, because CIG have said recently that they're not selling ships without the gameplay to go with it. As in, they're not making them flight ready. Oh, my apologies, I don't mean sell. I mean they're not they're not bringing them into the game now without at least some gameplay to support it. The Vulture with 318, giving the hull stripping ability to the Reclaimer, which is a really expensive, really nice do nothing in the game ship at the minute other than be a really inefficient cargo runner um, and just plummet from orbit, orbit like a stone. It's really good at that too. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's a really interesting ship. It's a really cool looking ship and it hopefully means that the modular stuff is coming soon. The last time we did that, like I said, was the Endeavour. Um, so hopefully this means now that the other ships they mentioned modularity for like the Redeemer, the Caterpillar, the Retaliator, um, which was supposed to be the first ship they were actually going to test modularity on. That stuff seems to be, today, one step closer to fruition. Now, the fact that this seems to have the modules closer now than the Retaliator, because we actually know what modules this is getting for a start, seems to indicate that there might have been a change at CIG. Maybe they've changed their intention, and the way... The, 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 the most obvious reason I can see doing that is with this ship, there is no existing hull. They can build the modularity in without being constrained by what exists already. They can have a go at putting it in, get good at doing that, get good CRG, at doing that with the galaxy itself without any constraints, and then figure out how they're going to do that um, in terms of uh, ships that already exist where they're going to have to conform to limitations that are already present in the game and that have been there for some time. So yeah, not as expensive as we were expecting. I think a lot of people were expecting the seven, eight hundred pound mark um, or dollar mark, and that just wasn't happening. That was based on what's going on previous. There has been a downward shift in the cost 
of the ships that they've been releasing. The Expanse come in way under what we expected. The Cutter is very reasonable for what it does uh, in terms of outright cost. For beginners coming in, having an interior to the ship, being able to move a vehicle around, that's all very exciting for them as well. A galaxy, um, let me know. What do you think? Does this invalidate your ship? Does this make it into your fleet list? Obviously, if you were interested in refining and cargo and medical gameplay, you can do that all now with one hull rather than having to have three. Uh, another strength of the modular. But let me know if that's you. Do you hate it? What do you think is of the aesthetics? Let me know what you think. Um, let me know how this video's turned out. This is yet another live one. You asked for the face, so that's all on you as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but stick around. Um, lots more content to come out of IAE. Uh, just a little bit afterwards, because there's a lot to compete with at the minute. You've been watching Drinkers with Gaming Problems. Thank you very much for stopping by. See you soon.